this point, the only persecution the church was receiving would just be uh, persecution stirred up mostly uh, by Jewish opposition to the gospel. We find a lot of this inside uh, the book of Acts. Very soon, though, persecution officially by Rome would start. It would start in about maybe 10, 12 years after this. Nero would start persecuting the church, and uh, Rome would officially become the opponent of the gospel. Rome still is the opponent of the gospel. They uh, realized they couldn't beat him, so they figured join him, and by joining him, perverted the church and made the Roman Catholic Church, which is still the opponent of the gospel. It teaches a false gospel. It teaches uh, salvation by works. So don't be fooled. Uh, Rome is still alive and well, and still is the opponent of the gospel. But uh, we see about the... Uh, I'm sorry. The key verse is... Chapter 3, verse 11, and let's see. Sam, could you read that for us? Galatians 3, 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. This is the key, the central element. The just shall live by faith. There's four places in the scriptures that get, uh, says this. One in the Old Testament, and three in the New Testament, in Romans, and in here... And one other passage, I didn't look this up because it just came to mind and right now, but um, let's see. The importance of this book, Roman numeral 4, and uh, capital letter A, we see all throughout this book, Christianity is distinctly separate from Judaism. Uh, Galatians 6, 15, the Bible says... For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And it's all about a new creature, the new way, the new walk. The old ways are done. They've been passed away with in Christ. We see about how Mount Sinai, we'll see this in chapter 4. Mount Sinai was the, uh, actually that's chapter, yeah, it's chapter 4. Mount Sinai is... Uh, the old way, it symbolized by Hagar, by Ishmael. And uh, the Bible says, Cast out the bondwoman, for the bondwoman shall not be free heir. The son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. That is Isaac, which is symbolized by grace. And uh, we see that uh, Christianity and Judaism, they're not the same. They are distinct. They are separate. Christianity is a fulfillment of the Old Testament Yes. Hebrews 10.38, see that reference? Just a little bit faith. Hebrews 10.38? Thank you. And uh, basically, Judaism as we know it today is not the identical to the Judaism of the Old Testament either. The Judaism of today is a response formed by the Jews when they realized that uh, their temple was destroyed and... Um, there wasn't going to be their old sacrificial way anymore. And so they decided that they had to come up with some way to have the Jewish religion apart from, well, apart from the way God had originally prescribed it in the Old Testament. So man kind of invented a new religion. It's kind of an interesting study. If uh, you're uh, interested, there's a lot you can read up on it. But Judaism is not the same as Christianity. And Christianity is not an offshoot of Judaism. It's a fulfillment of the Old Testament. Um, historic, capital letter B, historical data concerning the early church and the life of Paul. This book has more information in it than any other book except 2 Corinthians about the Apostle Paul himself and, of course, uh, the book of Acts. It contains also a theological explanation of Christ as the seed of Abraham in the fulfillment of the Abrahamic Covenant. Uh, quick question. What's the Abrahamic Covenant? Circumcision. Uh, that's the sign of it. What is the uh, what what did God promise to Abraham? Oh, that his uh, that his seed will outnumber uh, will be numbered like a seed like the sand of the So he promised him a seed. What else did he promise? That all old blessed through him? Yes, that all people would be blessed. He also promised him the land of Canaan. Promised him a land, a seed, and a blessing. Which is extra for today's lesson, but one day we'll probably study uh, 
the uh, Old Testament covenants at some point in the future. We probably, we might not in Sunday school. Um, we might have a separate Bible study or at some point or something for that. It's a neat study. It's also a very in-depth study. Uh, but the uh, this promise of the seed, this is the fulfillment of the Old Testament covenant. All nations of the earth were blessed through this seed because this seed died on the cross for our sins and uh, was buried, rose again, and we all can be saved through him. The promise of God to Abraham was for all nations of the earth. God wants everyone to be saved. And God's plan for Israel was to use Israel as a vehicle, if you will, for the uh, Bible and to bring the Messiah into the world. God's plan always has been for all people to hear the gospel and to be saved. And uh, Importance number D is uh, it refutes the lie of lordship salvation. Justification is by faith in Christ. Sanctification is by the walk in the Spirit. Lordship salvation teaches that uh, to get saved you have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And that's not true. When a person gets saved, a person comes to God and says, God, I'm a sinner, please save me, basically. It does not include making Jesus Lord of your life. That is surrender. That is separation. But that is not salvation. Um, the expectation is often that a person gets saved and all of a sudden they'll be perfect and they'll quit sinning and they'll get rid of all kinds of bad things in their life. I've heard often people say, well, he prayed to get saved, but I'm not really sure he's saved because he's still doing this, 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 and this. That's not salvation. Those are issues of separation. They're issues of sanctification, that is separating one's life apart unto Christ, but it is not salvation. Yes? But James talks about um, the way you do things reflects that you are saved. It does reflect it. So you should actually see some type of change in that person when they get saved. Well, the question is, is this. The book of James says, basically, uh, that a person who is not living the way he's supposed to, his faith is dead, and the question is, is that faith dead as in that person is no longer saved? Or is that faith dead as in that person's faith is not productive? His faith is dead, but which, is, which death is it? It's not, it's not a productive death. It's not a productive death. His faith is not producing the fruit it's supposed to. So uh, basically, if you're requiring to see uh, visible fruit as an evidence of salvation, then uh, you can lose your salvation if that's what uh, James is teaching. But um, another question a person ought to bring up in that is how much fruit does a person need to see? Does a person need to see another person's heart? Um, lordship salvation, I suspect, in a lot of churches where it springs up is a response to people who get saved and then decide to sin anyway. Um, they make statements like, if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he isn't Lord at all, which isn't true. It's not true. Um, believers, every believer should be growing in Christ. Not all believers grow at the same rate. Not all believers have the same opportunity. Not all believers um, have God working in them in the same way. Some believers come from cultures and backgrounds which are extremely wicked, and they have a ton of sin baggage just from the culture they come from, which they have to get right. We see this a lot here in South Florida. Um, the basic culture of here of South Florida is very different than, say, the basic culture of where I once lived in Pennsylvania. Where I used to live in Pennsylvania, um, people wouldn't be caught dead in what people walk around in the streets here in South Florida. Um, here in South Florida, often when people get saved, uh, it's a guy and a girl living together and they're not married. And uh, there's a whole lot of stuff. That's considered normal here in South Florida. It, uh, the lost down here, they see no problem whatsoever with that. And even many of the saved in a lot of the churches down here see no problem with that. So that's something a person needs to consider is uh, the background of where a Christian is coming from because, um, quite frankly, some people have a whole lot of things they need to take care of which uh, just are as a result of how they've lived in the past. But a uh, good question. Let's see. Uh, 
Moving on then for sake of time, the base.